Joining us now, I am so pleased to say, is Celantis CEO, Carlos Tavares. Carlos, when you talk about a turbulent year ahead, is it because of a lack of demand? Is it because of competition from China? Is it because of politics? Or is it because, frankly, people are just pushing back against pricing? Well, I think it's uh, because of all of the things you said, but we did not say it was more turbulent than 23. We said it was turbulent, which means, uh, you know, our industry, and specifically Stellantis, is now used to manage turbulent situations. It's, it's obvious that from a, an economics, a geopolitics, uh, technology uh, offensive of uh, Chinese uh, competitors, uh, we expect 2024 to be uh, quite uh, turbulent, indeed quite dynamic. But you know also that Stellantis is all about sports. It's all about racing. It is in our DNA to race. Uh, which means we like turbulence, we like because it's a very competitive period in which you can demonstrate eventually that you are better than the other guys. So uh, we like turbulence is an opportunity to show competitive edge for the company. And we can get into that in just a minute. I am curious uh, about some of the increased costs, in particular due to some of the labor negotiations that we've been seeing in the United States. I'm just wondering from your perspective how that's featured into some uh, potential cost cutting or other measures to try to offset some of the higher fees. Absolutely. You see that um, what is the most important for us is that we deliver on our mission, uh, which is to offer safe, clean, and affordable mobility. This is our mission. Uh, right now, we know that we have a challenge on affordability. Affordability means that we need to absorb the additional cost of the uh, EV technology. It's around uh, 30 to 40 percent. So we need to absorb it. And uh, we need to absorb it by a better design, a better design to cost by uh, more efficiency in everything we do, in, in our plants, in our supply chain, in our logistics. We need to make sure that at the end of the day, when we go to market, we have um, the most uh, uh, optimized strategy in the way to go to market. All of this is creating a huge area for optimization to accelerate the productivity that will mitigate the additional cost of the technology in order for us to make it very simple to sell uh, BEV cars at the price of uh, IC cars. This is the mission we have, and we expect to work very hard on that. The good thing is that as we delivered record results in 2023, we at the same time recognized that we did not do everything right. So all the things that operationally we did not do in a perfect way in 23 represent as many opportunities to do it better in 24 and contribute at one point in time to bringing BEV products to the market at the price of the ICs. That's our mission. Well, to get to that mission, does this mean more layoffs of people in the U.S. to compensate for some of those wage increases that happened at the end of the year? What it means is that uh, we are in a transformation. Um, perhaps it's good that we take a few seconds to explain that a transformation is not an addition, which means as we are expected to transform our industry to a more automotive tech oriented industry with zero emission vehicles what we are going to do is we are going to transform transform means less here and more there let me give you an example uh, we have been creating a very significant uh, brand new division of software engineers with more than 4,000 software engineers just to take care of uh, the infotainment, take care of the new uh, electronic architectures, and make sure that we bring all the services in the car that the consumers are expecting from us. So we are creating tons of jobs on software engineering. We may need less in other kinds of technologies, like, for instance, internal combustion engine technologies. So transformation means it's not an addition, means it's a change from what exists today to something different. This is what we are somewhere uh, instructed to do in this in this uh, very significant transformation of our industry. So, Carlos, can, we, can, this, can uh, we discuss the further transformation? The market is tuned in here this morning, and they want to know where you and the chairman are. Uh, you're, you're throwing off cash, up the dividend, great for the shareholders this morning. The market expects you to produce $30 billion in net cash this year. What the market will want to know is how aligned are you with John Elkin? 
You've both been on the tape. You're talking about M&A, he's pushing back. There are no plans being studied regarding mergers of Stellantis with other manufacturers. You're the CEO. We know you're an advocate of M&A. How aligned are you? Are you actively lobbying John to engage in M&A? Are you at odds or are you together? I think you, you just have to read carefully uh, what was said by the company and by our chairman in the sequence. Uh, the company said when those speculations, which by the way are pure speculations, when they appeared, uh, we said there is nothing ongoing. There is a statement, uh, a press release from mm -hmm. the company at that point in time. 24 hours later, the chairman, John Elkan, confirmed the same way. So I don't know where you are seeing any kind of misalignment. I just see a perfect alignment on those statements. So I want to confirm that indeed there is a perfect alignment. There is no ongoing M&A discussions. There is the perfect uh, recognition that in the future, the companies which are not fit to face the Chinese competition will may put themselves in trouble. We are not among those ones because we are, we are one of the most profitable uh, OEMs uh, on the planet. So we expect to stay healthy because if those opportunities were to come, then we will be there uh, eventually. But at this stage, I can confirm, as we did in a statement that was confirmed by the chairman a few hours later, that there is no ongoing discussion on that matter. So yeah. there is no misalignment and there is no M&A discussions right now. That was a pure speculation from a certain number of media, and you know perfectly well where it's coming from. Carlos, just quickly here, I am wondering, though, if you're basically saying that even without M&A, without making any acquisitions, Stellantis can compete on the electric vehicle front with China, given the current structure. I think we can. I think we can. Uh, the only open question will be the speed at which we are going to progress. Uh, I think we can. I think we have enough ideas. And uh, we have enough things that we are not doing perfectly well that we could do better. Uh, I think that our supply chain has been changing significantly in terms of more vertical integration that gives us more cost competitiveness in everything we do. So I think that when we look at the, the pool of ideas that we have to bring the cost of EVs down to the level of ICEs is quite large. And of course, we are embracing that. Uh, I would say in a very uh, exciting way, because we want to get the job done very quickly, uh, then are we going to be able to do it as fast as uh, uh, we wanted to? That's uh, something we'll see in the future. But there is a very important thing you can see already now, is that uh, in the European market, we are bringing the new EC3 Citroën at 23,300 euros, let's say 25 thousand yeah. dollars with a mid trim with a full equipment and features and that car is perfectly fit to face the chinese competition so we are already there yeah. and that car is sold with some profit not as many uh, profit much profit as we would like but it's already there so we are getting there yeah. and we expect now to accelerate carlos severas unfortunately we have to leave it there slant to ceo thank you so much this is bloomberg